Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where we had a request to take a look at the New York Times hard Sudoku uh, today, which is the 26th of September. And it's a, it's a lovely puzzle actually, it has, um, it has a little trick at the start which um, I think will improve us all as solvers if we study it. So let me explain how to make a beginning uh, on this puzzle. Now, so if, for example, we, we look at the central column of the grid, you can see that this 3x3 three three block here contains neither a 9 nor a 6. So we can use this 9 and 6 here to pencil mark 6 and 9s into these outside cells. And we see this a lot with this puzzle. So normally the way what one's mind works when, when solving a Sudoku is we focus on individual numbers and we try and use individual numbers. Like if we look at this 5 here and this 5 here, you can see we then say, OK, well, there must be a 5 in one of those two positions because that interacts with this 5. Often with the New York Times, what we need to do is to use pairs of numbers. And we, you know, so I'd encourage you, for example, you know, when, when looking at the grid like this one, look at this 5 and 6 and shuffle them both across here and notice that the 5s and 6s would be forced into the outside cells here. And in this instance, that doesn't help. But with the New York Times puzzle style, it's that sort of logic of using pairs and triples um, that will be useful. Now, but anyway, I digress slightly. You can see the 6969 nine here. Well, what does that mean? That means that the numbers 1, 2, and 8 are definitely appearing in these three cells here. And that has an interesting effect on column 5 because we now need to ask where we can place the, the, the missing numbers. You can see that we can no longer place a 5 here or here. So the only place a 5 can go now is in this cell. And that means that this cell must be a 3 or a 7, and this cell must be a 3 or a 7. Now, very early on in a solve, if you come across this sort of thing, you need to spend time on it, because it's very unlikely that this is an accident. Um, uh, so we need to try and work out why might it be important that this cell has had any of these numbers removed from its possibilities. You can see there's not a lot else affecting what this cell can be. I mean, we've got the 5, the 9 here, we've got this 6 over here, but other than these three cells having such a profound effect on it, there's not a lot else going on. Um, the numbers one and two are the clue here because if we if we now think about ones and twos, we, um, our eyes might be drawn across to this three by three block, where we we do have a one and a two, we also have a four. So now let's think about row two in the context of there being a one, a two, and a four in this three by three block. What does that tell us? And hopefully you're all seeing it. We need to place 1, 2, and 4 in row 2. Well, can't go in any of these three cells. No longer can go in this cell. The 4 could never go in, but the 1 and 2 can't either because of this logic we've discovered down here. So, in fact, there are only three cells now open to take the 1, 2, and 4 in row 2, and that's those three cells there. And that is the trick to solving this puzzle because you can see immediately now we have a 2 and a 4 down here so in fact we can now write in a 1 into this cell that gives us a 1 here that gives us a 1 here and that gives us a 1 here and in fact from there the puzzle collapses very quickly I just wanted to show you that little trick that gets you started today and to recommend that if we discover something complicated that limits a cell or two in that first part of the solve, it's definitely worth spending, I don't know, 30 seconds, one minute, just focusing on that one, that one cell and asking ourselves why. Why has that cell been restricted? And that's what helped me to spot this one, two, four pattern over in the top left there. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and um, we'll see you again soon. Another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.